One of the saddest stories in English history is the fate of the nine-day queen, Lady Jane Grey. Following Edward VI's death, the Protestant Lady Jane became queen for a very short time, as Edward had declared her his heir. She would stay on the throne from the 10th of July 1553 to the 19th of July, following being removed by Mary I, who many considered in fact to be the rightful heir, being the eldest child of Henry VIII. We know much about Lady Jane Grey's execution, but there was another casualty who met a similar fate to the nine-day queen, that being her husband, Lord Guilford Dudley. He was a young man being a teenager still when he was dragged out of the Tower of London, up to Tower Hill, and beheaded in public in front of a large crowd. So join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Lord Guilford Dudley, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Lord Guilford Dudley was born around 1535, being the son of John Dudley, the first Duke of Northumberland. The Dudleys throughout history have a rich backstory, and one of his relatives was even executed by Henry VIII. Guilford received a rather modest humanist education, and was raised in a Protestant household. Following Henry VIII's break from Rome, and during the reign of Edward VI, England was turning towards being more Protestant, with the English Reformation. His father gained the title the Lord President of the Council for the young king. By holding this title, John Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland, had immense power and influence across the country, and following the execution of the Lord Protector, the Duke of Somerset, Edward Seymour, John Dudley became incredibly powerful. The Lord President of the Council, as he was known, reshuffled many high offices, becoming the Grand Master of the Household, and he even organised the King's political education, and during his adolescence, tried to prepare him for kingship. By 1550 he was the head of the Privy Council, and was in a sense the de facto ruler of England. Guilford's mother had been a lady-in-waiting to Anne Boleyn and Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's wives, so the family were of incredibly high status. Guilford was described as a virtuous and goodly gentleman, but in 1552 his father tried to marry him to Margaret Clifford, the only surviving daughter of the Earl of Cumberland. She also had links to Henry VII, but Margaret's father was against the marriage. For this the Duke of Northumberland had to look for a different suitor for his son, and in spring 1553 he became engaged to the 16-year-old Lady Jane Grey, who was close to the English throne. She was also a great-granddaughter of Henry VII, however was closer to the throne in the line of succession. On the 25th of May 1553, Jane and Guilford married, alongside two other couples at the Duke of Northumberland's mansion. It was noted how it was an incredible spectacle and festival, with much entertainment such as mass balls, jousts and music. Different European ambassadors were there, showing off what a spectacle this was. At the turn of the year 1553, the king became rather ill. Edward VI was unwell, with a fever and a cough that got worse as time went on, and it's assumed that he had tuberculosis. As the year continued, it was clear that Edward would not live as his condition worsened, and the royal doctors began to prepare for the death of the young king. Because Edward was a young boy who had no heir, the scheming Duke of Northumberland, John Dudley, would set to work on a scheme to promote his son Guilford and his wife Jane as the next in line. King Edward wanted his throne to pass to a Protestant. Many in his council worried about the problems that would occur if his half-sister Mary was placed on the throne with the fact that she was Catholic. The king also opposed her succession because of her mother and father's marriage being declared void. The same reason of legitimacy was levelled against Edward's other half-sister Elizabeth, as although she was a Protestant, her mother was Anne Boleyn, who met her end being executed within the walls of the Tower of London. Edward for this passed a law in which his half-sisters were written out of the line of succession, with his successor being named as his cousin, Lady Jane Grey. Edward died on the 6th of July 1553, and three days later Jane was told she was the Queen, and she wasn't initially keen on the idea, but did accept the crown. She was announced Queen on the 10th of July after Edward's death had also been announced. The Duke of Northumberland had done his work, he had manipulated his daughter-in-law to become Queen of England, but also now his son would become the de facto King of England. Although the now royal couple were very young in their teens, the Protestants in the country may have been happy at the thought of having a Protestant King or Queen who could rule the country, and carry on the work of Edward VI with the Reformation. Now Guilford Dudley is the de facto King, 
accompanied his wife into the Tower of London on the 10th of July 1553 to await Jane's coronation, as was customary for kings and queens at the time. Guildford himself wanted to be more than the Queen's husband. He wanted to be king in his own right. Although his wife had the royal blood, Guildford wanted to become the king and the ruler. It seems him and Jane had a good relationship, however this demand by Guildford would have placed strain on the couple. Jane, who was the queen and the ruler at the end of the day, had a long discussion with her husband about this, saying that he would only be made king by her or an act of parliament. Jane agreed only to make him the Duke of Clarence, which annoyed her husband, as he didn't want to be a duke, but be a king. This argument was overheard by the Duchess of Northumberland, who was furious by the whole matter, and banned Guildford from sleeping with his wife. He was also told to leave the Tower of London and go home, but Jane stuck up for him, saying he should remain by her side at the Tower and at court. Daily council meetings were presided over by Guildford, who allegedly also pretty much assumed the role of kingship by addressing himself as royalty, and a French ambassador did describe him as a new king, with other reports from the continent documenting the existence of King Guildford. The problem with Lady Jane's claim to the throne was the fact that she was so distantly related to royalty when compared to the direct living descendants of King Henry VIII. There were two direct descendants to the former king and Edward's father alive, and one of these would make a power play to oust Jane. Mary, later becoming Mary I or Bloody Mary, assembled her supporters in an attempt to claim the throne, and she declared herself the rightful queen. Initially, the Privy Council supported Jane, however they later changed their allegiance to Mary, proclaiming her queen on the 19th of July 1533, bringing the reign of Lady Jane Grey to an end. The Duke of Northumberland had failed in his attempt to see off Mary's rebellion, and Lady Jane and Guildford Dudley now became prisoners inside the tower, instead of preparing for their coronation. The majority of the Privy Council left the tower, and Jane was moved from the royal apartments inside the tower to the gentleman jailer's lodgings. Guildford was imprisoned within the bell tower, and he was later joined by his brother Robert. These two were kept in different towers, as was his father, the Duke of Northumberland, and it would only be his father at this moment who would be executed. Guildford's father was executed on Tower Hill, however at this moment Mary was happy to spare the young Jane and Guildford their lives. Jane and Guildford were accused of high treason, and stood trial on the 13th of November 1553. They were convicted of high treason, and decided to plead guilty. Guildford Dudley was convicted of compassing to depose Mary I, by sending Northumberland's troops, and by proclaiming Jane and honouring her as Queen. Jane in prison was given greater privilege than her husband, being allowed to walk freely in the Queen's gardens, but Guildford could only take some breaths of fresh air from within the bell tower. The couple may have had some contact with each other, and for the time being, it seemed that they would just be imprisoned, despite being convicted of treason. Things did begin to change though for Guildford and Jane. When Mary I planned to marry the unpopular Prince Philip of Spain, later to become Philip II of Spain, it was greeted across England by much unpopularity. It was feared that a Protestant rebellion could occur, and later following Wyatt's rebellion in 1554, it was believed that Jane could be brought onto the throne again, and could be seen as a symbol of revolt. Although it wasn't the intention to bring Jane onto the throne from this rebellion, she could be seen as a real threat to Mary's rule, and it became too much of a danger to have the young teenage girl alive. So Mary had to order the execution of Jane, and also Guildford. It did trouble the Queen to let her cousin die, but she came around to it based on the Privy Council's recommendation. It was later reported that Jane and Guildford were to lose their heads. So Guildford Dudley was to be executed by beheading. The day before the couple's execution was due, Guildford asked to meet his wife one last time, but she refused this request, saying it would only increase their misery and pain, and that they will meet again somewhere else shortly in heaven. At around 10 o'clock on the morning of the 12th of February 1554, Guildford Dudley, the man who wished so greatly to become king through his wife's queenship, was led out of the Tower of London to his place of execution, Tower Hill. A scaffold had been erected upon Tower Hill, a prominent site of public execution, in which large crowds would gather close to the Tower of London. The Chronicle of Queen Jane documents the execution of Lord Guildford Dudley. It says, Guildford went out of the tower to the scaffold on Tower Hill. 
the Lord Guilford Dudley, son to the late Duke of Northumberland, husband to the Lady Jane Grey, who at his going out to, by the hand of Sir Anthony Brown, John Frockmorton, and many other gentlemen praying them to pray for him. The sheriff received him and brought him to the scaffold, where after a small declaration, having no ghostly father with him, he kneeled down and said his prayers. Holding up his eyes and hands to God many times, and at the last after he had desired the people to pray for him, he laid himself along and his head upon the block, which was at one strong of the axe taken from him. So Guilford's death had been rather swift, he was allowed a short speech to the crowd, before his head was hacked off with one swift blow of the axe. Following his death, his headless body was taken back on a cart into the Tower of London, at which Lady Jane Grey, his wife, witnessed the body of her husband, and she cried out, Oh, Guilford, Guilford. Within the next hour, Jane herself would be executed, bringing an end to the nine-day queen and her husband, who desired so much to become king himself. Lady Jane Grey is considered a rather tragic figure in English history, who was treated as a mere pawn in the political plays of so many to elevate themselves within Tudor society. Lord Guilford Dudley, however, can be considered to be a victim of his father's quest for more power, However, he is noted to have been a good husband to Jane, and that she was very fond of him. His execution on Tower Hill was a clear sign to the public that Mary I was in control of the country, and to force people to think twice about rebelling against the Queen, who would later go on to be known as Bloody Mary. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.